This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Socrates apparently once said, It's a shame for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is capable, which is why it's such a shame he died 2300 years before Greece was ruled by Kyriakos Grizzly. As you guys probably know by now, I am somewhat of a connoisseur of anything involving jacked men with big egos trying to do something better than some other guy. And while hosting a podcast is a topic for another day, today we're talking about bodybuilding. Now, the vast majority of people who are into bodybuilding just like the idea of getting jacked rather than trying to actually compete, which is a much better objective because you probably won't ever accomplish either. One of the most common reasons guys get into bodybuilding is because they want to get girls, and while you get over that phase quickly, a big reason for this is because many wannabe bodybuilders started their gym journey from the humble and insecure teenage Google search, what body type do girls like in a guy? Now, this is an eye-opener because the answer is rarely Seabum, Ronnie Coleman, or even Arnold, which makes no sense to the average guy who always pushes the character creation slider all the way to the right. For example, for any girls watching right now, I say rhetorically, which do you think is more attractive? A. Brad Pitt in Fight Club, or B. Christian Bale in The Machinist? Now that you've locked in your answer, the bodybuilders will reveal how they compare the two, which is of course C. They're the same picture, it's just lighting and a pump. Similarly, one of the notorious psychological side effects of bodybuilding is that right now there are currently teenagers who see a Hollywood star like Tom Holland and think, I want to be that ripped one day. But five years later you'll look at Chris Hemsworth as Thor and think, small chest, no traps, lats are okay, still has a neck? <laughs> Pathetic. 5.5 out of 10. This phenomenon where other people look at you and think, damn, looking huge bro, but you look at yourself and think, I'm so small, I need to get bigger, is a common side effect of bodybuilding called being correct. Now in order to cancel out any benefit of the BetterHelp sponsorship, I wanted to give you the definitive guide to every possible male body type and whether you can actually look like that naturally or not. Let me just open up my shirtless men folder I've been collecting for exactly this purpose. We all have this one, don't we boys? Now, the primary determinant in what your body looks like is the volume of muscle on your body and the amount of body fat you have as a percentage of your overall weight. So assuming you're about 5 foot 9, the chart looks roughly like this. If you have a body fat percentage about 10 or below, but also basically no muscle, you'll weigh about 115 to 130 pounds and look roughly like this. By the way, he put himself on Adobe stock images, not my responsibility. As you add on more muscle while maintaining the same overall body fat percentage, you can see you go from Twitch streamer to otter mode, then you're basically jacked to the tits, then diced to the socks, then you eventually get to the final form of anyone with a low body fat percentage, which is actually looking like you lift when wearing a shirt. So the second row is exactly the same progression, except with a body fat percentage of 15 to 20 percent. Notable physiques in this category include skinny fat, the dad bod, the daddy bod. Then of course you have the power builder, which is either an off-season bodybuilder or a power lifter trying to cut. Then of course the notorious bear mode. I swear I'm not making these up. These are actually established taxonomical classifications. So then at 25% body fat and higher, we have white collar dad bod, the median American, blue collar dad bod, the true power lifter, and of course, transcendence. Now, the good news is that first of all, everything in the first column is achievable naturally. All you have to do is as little as possible. Believe it or not, everything I've colored in green is likely achievable natty by nearly anyone. After that, yellow is achievable if you have good genetics or are short, which by the transitive property of bodybuilding means that being short is good genetics. Checkmate male models. Everything in orange is basically always going to require you being on the juice, and everything in red speaks for itself. Roughly speaking, if you're 5 foot 9, natural, have extremely good genetics, have been lifting 10 plus years properly, the biggest you can be is about 175 to 195 pounds at 10% body fat, depending on the size of your bones, muscle insertions, and whether you're built like Adam Anja or Mike Isratal. As a comparison, Mr. Olympia bodybuilders at the same height frequently get on stage at half the body fat and weigh 240 pounds. Being a fan of actual competitive bodybuilding, there are always a plethora of non-bodybuilding fans who say things to me like, so you, you enjoy watching nearly naked muscly guys lathered up in spray tan flex next to each other? Yes. Thing is, if you find yourself spending a questionable amount of time judging the physiques of jack dudes in micro thongs, you might say to yourself, wait, I, I thought I was straight, but maybe I am sexually confused. If this happens, just spend the $10 for Vladislava Galligan's OnlyFans and you'll immediately realize, nope, now that I'm aware of what actual sexual confusion is, I can say in hindsight I definitely wasn't experiencing it before. 
It's important to know that if you are considering taking steroids or testosterone, it doesn't just enhance your ability to build muscle, it comes with a lot of side effects. These are often considered bad by regular people when they are clearly just small and jealous. These include your muscles growing faster than your tendons and ligaments, resulting in debilitating injury. This is also known in bodybuilding as suffering from success. Going bald. This is obviously not a problem because you're balding already. Testicular atrophy. Now, when anyone thinks of testicles, they all think the same thing. Guaranteed crit. Finally, this is the opportunity to eliminate that weak spot. Plus, girls will think your dick is bigger because your balls will appear further away. Heightened tendency for aggravation. Would you rather get in one fight and lose it or get in 10 fights and win them? Exactly. Suppressed fluid intelligence. You literally won't be able to tell. If anyone calls you stupid, just fight them. Most people don't consider bodybuilding an extreme sport, but when you bring up skydiving, rock climbing, or heli skiing, most people ask, why do they do it if it's so risky? And the athletes always say something like, I love it so much, I'd die for my sport. In contrast, in contest bodybuilding, dying is the sport. It's worth it though, because if you're 265 pounds, severely dehydrated, and have 3% body fat, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, in this case, it is total organ failure, but that's a small price to pay in the grand scheme of things. For now, get that trophy, go to a sushi buffet, gain 50 pounds in a work week, and then live to die another day. Now, if you're looking to get into bodybuilding, here's some advice from someone who's been going to the gym for 10 years, as in physically arriving there, not in terms of progress, obviously. First of all, going to the gym and rapidly progressing for the first few months is like having sex for the first time. You say to yourself, holy shit, this is amazing. I'm sure this is going to continue at the same rate forever. But no, all progress will be halted when you go too hard and get your back blown out. Secondly, there are some immutable facts of bodybuilding that defy conventional logic. For example, nearly all bodybuilders struggle to grow their calves despite doing the optimal training routine, which is five sets of seated calf raises at the end of leg day. Frankly, there is nothing else you can possibly do. You just have bad genetics, should have been Asian or previously obese. Third, in order to bodybuild effectively, you have to go on phases where you gain weight and muscle, and then phases where you cut body fat and maintain as much muscle as possible, then repeat the process for optimal results. Don't be afraid to take your time on this, because if you go too quickly, you'll gain too much fat or lose too much muscle. Personally, I like to do a three or four month bulk, then a four to five year period of telling people I'm cutting. Lastly, the most important thing about bodybuilding is that it's not about winning a trophy or getting the honeys. It's about putting on a dress shirt, rolling up your sleeves, and receiving a compliment on your forearms once every few months. It's not about being the most jack guy at the pool party, it's about achieving negative buoyancy. Ultimately, at the end of the day, like all sports, bodybuilding isn't about the destination. It's all about burning more calories per day so you can eat more. Now, if you ever find yourself looking at a picture of Kyriakos Grizzly and thinking, what if I never become this? As a single tear rolls down your cheek, you might want to consider today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Because look at me, despite being absolutely massive, sometimes I look in the mirror and doubt myself. This is why BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy both more accessible and affordable with remote and online therapy sessions with a professional. One of the biggest problems I've had with finding a therapist locally is that none of them have doors I can fit through, making BetterHelp's online service a valuable alternative to those with limited options in their area. By filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. So whether you have clinical mental health issues like anxiety or depression, or if you're just a human living your life and feeling kind of small, figuratively of course, therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a different way. One of the best things about BetterHelp is if you ask them to point to which person they think has the most aesthetic physique on the chart and they don't pick the picture of yourself you snuck in there, that's okay because you're able to easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost. As I always say, if you're suffering from what feels like the weight of the world on your shoulders, consider hack squats until your traps aren't so small, but also consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash casually explained to also get 10% off your first month so you can connect with a professional and see if it helps you. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel.